Our next speaker is Dr. Shamala Devi of Unisti Putra Malaysia, Bintulu campus. Some background to Dr. Shamala. She is a senior lecturer from the Department of Crop Sciences, Faculty of Agriculture and Food Sciences, UPM, Bintulu, Sarawak campus. She received her PhD from the same university. Over the last decade, Dr. Shamala has undertaken extensive research on passion fruit, including aspects of its antioxidant activity, nutrition, reproductive biology, and genetic variability. Dr. Shamala is also a prolific scientific writer and has authored scores of scientific publications. Today, Dr. Shamala will be touching on the current status and initiatives to develop passion fruit as a potential fruit crop in Malaysia. Dr. Shamala, we welcome you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Ms. Dorothy, the chairperson for today's event. And a very good morning, good evening, and also good afternoon to my fellow panels, the organizers, and also all the audience that uh, attended today's webinar. So without further ado, I would like to start my presentation entitled Current Status and Prospects of Passion Fruit Cultivation in Malaysia. So generally, the facts that I'm going to share with you all today is based on my own experience and also my research finding for past uh, 10 years, all right? So I begin my presentation with the overview of the Passiflora species. So this will give some idea to everyone what is this fruit is about. So Passiflora species, or known as passion fruit, may well be the most fascinating plants of the tropic. As you can see in the photo here, the flowers are extremely beautiful. They produce like a very strong aroma. And of course, the fruits are contain um, more nutritional, phytotherapeutic, and also produce a unique flavor. So passion fruit is a high value export oriented crop because the fruits and the bright product itself are highly valued in the pharmaceutical and also nutraceutical industries. So this passion fruit generally belongs to the Passiflorasia family. Actually, there are about more than 500 species of passion fruit available all around. But uh, there are only 50 species are producing the edible fruits. And of course, out of these 50, only two forms are widely distributed in the tropical regions and economically important. The first one is the purple passion fruit. The second one is the yellow passion fruit. So these two are widely cultivated for commercial scale. And generally, Passion fruit is classified as a minor tropical fruit together with guava, durian, lychee, and also rambutan. So about the distribution or its origin, of course, uh, passion fruit is not native to Malaysia. It is native to South America, and South America is the center of the diversity. So Brazil is the main producer and also main consumer of this passion fruit, and US, Germany, Japan, New Zealand are their main importers. So the world production now is like estimated about 1.7 million tons in year 2019. So why the passion fruit is so unique? What's so special about the passion fruit? Actually, their juice is very aromatic and they have the unique flavor. And by drinking a cup of passion fruit, we can get most of the minerals that are needed by our body in daily requirement. And also they are rich in the vitamin A and C together with the antioxidant properties. So there is a says that a passion fruit a day keeps insomnia away, where all the passion fruit parts, especially the juice, the flower, the leaves, are, have the ability to treat the insomnia. And besides, when we look into the flowers uh, photos, right, they are very colorful and they have a very strong uh, fragrance as well. So this could be a good candidate for ornamental purposes. Besides, passion fruit is also one of the fruit that contain a lot of medicinal values. They are very good, uh, good for vision, skin, and also protect our body from free radicals, anti-inflammatory, anti-diabetic, anti antibacterial, and many more. So all these things makes the passion fruit is high in demand actually. And even like during the COVID-19 pandemic, in European market, one of the fruit product that grabs high uh, demand during the panic buying is the passion fruit puree actually. 
So now we moving on to the status of passion fruit in Malaysia. As I mentioned just now, this fruit is non-native to Malaysia. It's being introduced, but passion fruit is not new to Malaysia. So the first growing was reported in 1914 in Gunung Angsi, Negeri Sembilan. After that, the cultivation has been expanded to Camera Highland and also in Ae Hitam for the commercial cultivation. But then what happened was the population is affected by the passion fruit woodiness diseases. So this discouraged the further expansion of this fruit at that time. However, in 2006, the fruit gaining back its popularity in Malaysia. And of course, now it's being one of the accepted uh, fruit in food and also health industry. And it's fetching a good price as well. The price ranging from 12 to 20, depend, depending on uh, where it's available. And uh, because of the high demand during the COVID, so it is expected the demand for passion fruit puris will continuously rise until 2027. Okay, now I would like to introduce what are the species that are available in Malaysia. So basically, um, based on my observation and also based on my reading, there are nine species has been recorded to present in Malaysia. And those two species, which is purple passion fruit and also yellow passion fruit, is known as Makisa. So there is no any particular name for uh, these two. So we just address as Makisa here in Malaysia. I think similar name uh, in Indonesia as well. So this purple passion fruit is suitable to be consumed as a fresh and the yellow one is more to like, uh, they have a high acidic and more to become the processed products like making a juice and so on. So these are some of the passion fruit products that can be found in the local uh, supermarkets and most of these are imported one. And along with this, we do have this Passifora quadrangularis that cultivated in a small scale in Malaysia so it is also known as a giant. From the name itself, we can know that this is among, I mean, among all the passion fruit, this is the species that producing a bigger fruit. So the weight can go up to one to three kgs. Okay, then the unique about this fruit is they have a very strong uh, uh, aroma of the flower and also they are producing a very thick and crunchy mesokap. So the taste of the mesokap is exactly like a honeydew. And of course, they have a juicy pulp. And in terms of nutritional properties, they are equally uh, important as Passifora quadrangularis. Somehow, they are very less acidic, especially the mesoca. And uh, Passifora quadrangularis, Passiflora carure also can be found in Malaysia, but people just uh, cultivate in a small scale or just at the backyard of their house. And Passifora incanata, is highly valued for the medicinal users. It has been using in the medicinal uh, for, I mean, since ancient time. Along with this, we have this Passiflora coccinea in certain part of Malaysia. This plant is valued for landscape because they, the flowers are simply unique and it's like uh, capturing our attention actually. And together with this, we have two wild passion fruit that widely can be grown everywhere. So one of it is the Passiflora fotida, which is known as Bua Bulu or Bua Letop in Malaysia. So particularly in Sarawak, the local community people like to take the young shoot of it and cook with the puso. Puso is known as anchovy. So they, took, they cook as a stir fry and then eat it with the rice. And recently we have this tower. This one is not the new species. So this one is just the new record to be present in Malaysia called as the Passiflora suburosa. Passiflora suburosa is the wild type of passion fruit which they produce this purple berry. So this berry is non-toxic even though they're present in the wild, but they have a potential to become the natural colorant. So the research is still ongoing and hope we can publish this soon, all right? So that's all about what are the species that are available here in Malaysia. Now we're moving on to the status of passion fruit production in Malaysia. So the total acreage and the production are not well documented in Malaysia. Basically in Malaysia, passion fruit is still cultivated in a small scale, like uh, together with the integrated uh, with livestock, like a chicken, rabbit and goats. Even the local communities like to cultivate this plant at their backyard or at the empty area near their buildings for self-consumptions. 
right? However, I have found, found one um, report from the FAO where stating that Malaysia is producing about 5,000 metric ton of uh, passion fruit average in 2015 to 2017. So it seems like there is no any proper documentation. So it's probably the estimation. It could be the estimation. And Malaysia mainly focusing on the other tropical food like durian, a jackfruit, mango, watermelon, and so on. So less, less attention has been given to this passion fruit. So that is one of the reasons why passion fruit is still considered as an underrated fruit, fruit in this region. So maybe because there is a inadequate information about its feasibility and also lack awareness of these fruits among the uh, populations. However, Passion fruit is, uh, even though it's not that popular in Malaysia, but it's fetching a good price in the global market. So as you can see, the price is can be comparable with like rambutan, lychee, and guava. Okay. Okay. Why passion fruit can be a potential uh, upcoming industry in Malaysia is because it is also uh, I mean, our environment, especially the climate of Malaysia, is more suitable or more prevalent for growing of the passion fruit. We have adequate amount of rainfall, enough of sunlight, and then little variation in the photo period. So this will make the passion fruit can grow successfully here in the large scale. Besides, passion fruit also is uh, uh, can grow wider and can produce fruits by six to seven months after transplanting. And their life cycle also can go up to four to five years. This one based on my research. So during the fourth year, the production will be declined. So at that time, we can prepare the cutting for next transplanting cycle. And based on my research also, we can get a good yield uh, when cultivating the passion fruit in our local climate, even though it's not native to Malaysia. And one of the features that I want to share here is in the local uh, environment, which is the Brazil climate, the passion fruit bloom in the morning. However, when we, transplant, when we cultivate the passion fruit in Malaysia, they will bloom in the noon. So this is one of the adaptive features that I would like to share here that showing that the plant can be adapted to various climatic conditions. And this will give the assurance for the successful fruit production as well. And moving on to the phenological cycle, the first two cycles represent the Passiflora idulis that I would like to highlight here. The passion fruit can be fruiting and flowering throughout the year. So we, if like 12 months, we still can get the flowers and the fruits for 12 months. Only things like there will be a variation in terms of their peak. Sometimes we'll get a major peak, sometimes we'll get the minor peak, depending on the pruning cycle as well. And apart from the juice, the other plant parts of the passion fruit are equally uh, important and they have uh, many uses actually. So none of these plant parts going to be become the waste. So especially the seeds here, the seeds contain a good dietary fiber, especially the insoluble fiber, and they are also rich in the oil. So when we test the oil properties, the, the oil having the similar characteristic as the sunflower oil. So they are rich in the unsaturated, plus they, are good, they have a good antioxidant properties as well. Besides, this product I have uh, bought from one of the passion fruit farm actually. They sell the dry leaf. So they said this dry leaf is good to treat many uh, diseases. So one of the thing is we can make a decision from the dry leaf so when we test the properties of the leaves, actually they are rich in dietary, I mean, they are rich in, rich in the secondary metabolites, particularly the alkalides, phenolic and flavonoids. So all these components are very important to uh, treat various diseases, especially the inflammatory, sedative and many more. And last but not least, rain is the major waste in the passion food industry. But researchers have discovered that the flour from the rain is, can be become the stabilizing agent 
emulsifiers, thickener, and also as a gelling agents. Why? Because this um, ring is rich in the pectin. So this pectin can be used to all this, all the properties that I have mentioned just now. Okay. Now, moving on to the strategy. Now we have seen there are so much of important and they are increasing demand of passion fruit, even locally and also internationally. So how to boost up this passion fruit industry in Malaysia is of course, by creating the awareness. It's like not everyone in Malaysia is aware about the presence of this fruit. Although we know there are so much of health benefits or so much of nutrition from this fruit. So of course, uh, how to create the awareness is through publicity. Maybe the government or any other agencies need to introduce this, this fruit or need to advertise this fruit in the TV or social media, even like introducing this fruit in the hotels, restaurants, or even the, in airlines and etc. The second is obtaining the quality planting materials. This is one of the things that, that lacking in Malaysia where we don't have a improved variety here. So all this while you just bought the seeds or you just do the cutting and we plant it. So this can be one of the reasons why the production is still low. So if we're able to get the improved varieties, so we can expand the uh, passion fruit to the larger cultivation. And of course, the good cultivation practices should be shared with the local growers and also farmers. We have to educate them to accurately assess the nutrition and when the right time to apply the uh, fertilizer, when the right time to do the hand pollinations or even the pruning, training, and many more. So this will help them to uh, cultivate the passion fruit in the large scale successfully. And pest and disease management is one of the important things that look into. And definitely the post hours management also equally important when we talk about the large scale production. Because in Malaysia, the post hours management for passion fruit is very, very much lacking. And next is developing market linkage. So developing market linkage, of course, is like very important factors that we need to look into. Why? Because if like we ask the farmers to cultivate the passion fruit in a larger scale, of course, first thing is they, they will definitely think about the market. So when we develop the market, so the farmers also will be confident in producing the passion fruit in the large scale. And next, of course, um, collaboration. So the collaboration between all the potential stakeholders like the farmers, government agencies, and research institute is very much important to boost up this passion fruit industry in Malaysia. So as a conclusion, it is possible to infer the cultivation and processing of passion fruit are technically feasible and can be expanded in Malaysia. And passion fruit industry can be about much needed employment opportunity, especially for the small scale uh, farmers, not only through cultivation, but also to the establishment of more processing and semi-processing units. So these three key points are very important. Establish uh, product, I mean production method. Second is the grower adoption. And third is the product innovation. Uh, if like we can tackle these three components, definitely we can uh, boost up this industry in Malaysia. So last but not least, I would like to acknowledge uh, Mr. Yaakob for inviting me for this webinar and uh, UPM for providing me. So far, I received two grants for this passion fruit project and my ex-supervisor who introduced this fruit to me and my research team and not forgetting all my collaborators. Thank you from me. Thank you very much, Dr. Shamala, once again for providing us with a very good account of uh, available species of passion fruit and its utilization in Malaysia, the efforts that are currently being undertaken in R&D and the present developments, including the potential for passion fruit to be marketed more widely, especially targeting the domestic market and expansion in terms of uh, its production in Malaysia, given the potential of the commodity to adapt to Malaysia's agroclimatic conditions. And as proposed as one of the strategies, it is hoped that more awareness can be created 
on the importance of passion fruit among the general population and also the industry in the coming days. Once again, thank you, Dr. Shamla.